All right, today's interview, we have the recruiter of the dark. We have with us Coach James Kane out of Dayton, formerly of Murray State. What's up, Coach? How you doing, Dan? I appreciate you having me. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we use the uh, in the dark because that's really what Ja talks about, doing the work in the dark. Uh, and a lot of it is uh, mainly what he does when nobody's watching. And he was recruited when nobody was watching. So it's very, very fitting. Uh, but we're going to get into Jaws recruitment. But first, I want to ask an important question. Jalen Crutcher is out of Ridgeway High School. He is now with the Greensboro Swarm. You recruited him. Mm-hmm. A little bit about the player, but also an important question I want to ask. Are there certain cities that you go to that you want to be your honey hole of recruiting? Or is it just like, hey, there's a good player there. I'm just going to go find him wherever he is. Um, you know, as a recruiter, you know, depending how long you've been in this business for you, you rely on relationships. Um, and, you know, a lot of my relationships are in the South. Um, when my time at Murray State, I was able to build some relationships with key AAU coaches, high school coaches um, in Memphis. And, you know, but then sometimes you go to different events here and there and, and a kid catches your eye and, you know, you might not even ever been into the state before yeah. and you just – you know, your job is to follow up and follow through. Um, you know, that's one thing that uh, Coach McMahon really instilled in us as a staff at Murray State. And, you know, you just you, you trust your eyes a lot. And then, you you know, you're only as good as your intel in this business. So uh, you want to rely on your relationships with that. In terms of Jalen, um, you know, one of my buddies, um, you know, well, long story short, he we uh, we had him at Murray State for team camps and elite camps. Um, so we have always known the name. Uh, and uh, Mac, Matt McMahon did a good job getting him to campus during our camps. Um, he committed to Chattanooga. And when he decommitted, one of my buddies of his AAU coach um, called me and told me um, he was decommitting. So that's when I was able – it was during the transition that I moved to Dayton. And I was able to call him and – and get my eyes back on him in April and, and um, you know, be able to start that relationship there. So, um, but, you know, Jalen Crutcher's, you know, diamond in the rough. You know, yeah. um, he was under-recruited, and he's a special player, did some special things at, at Dayton. That's That kind of seems to be uh, your go-to, the diamond in the rough, the under-recruited, because uh, just speaking of Ja, like not recruited hardly at all. So tell me a little bit about the story. A, a lot of people know how it, how it all came down, but, you know, who knows if the stories are exactly perfect. So a little bit about how you found John and kind of stumbled upon him. Well, you know, every recruitment is different. Um, you know, at the beginning, like you said, not many schools were on him, but toward, I mean, at the end, he had, he had options. John had options and staying true to his commitment to Murray State, um, you know, just as a testament to who he is and who his family is. And, you know, he's one of the most loyal kids I've ever been around, his family as well. Um, but, you know, I just I was um, traveling to Spartanburg, South Carolina for a um, for a one day combine to see Tevin Brown, okay. um, who's on the team now. Um, and, you know, long story short, I ended up in the back gym. Um, you know, Jod caught my eye then. Um, so I followed up that night, uh, called his uh, called his dad from my hotel room, got his schedule for the next day. And it just so happened that Ja and Tevin were playing against each other. So wow. when I first saw him, he was doing three. He was, he was just playing three on three in the back gym. I saw him live the next day, um, five on five, full court. Uh, and him and Tevin were playing. And, um, you know, obviously I was there for Tevin. And then, you know, they both had tremendous games. Um, and after the game, I I, uh, I just called Matt McMahon. And then, you know, we we talked and you know, told him about Ja and, and, you know, Matt did a tremendous job of, of um, coming up the next day and recruiting him, making him a priority and, and building that relationship. And, you know, the staff at Murray State did a phenomenal job as well. And then, you know, Murray's a special place. So once you get to Murray um, and see it with your own eyes, you know, it's a special place to where yep. kids want to be. Yeah, it is. I've actually visited Murray State many a times back in uh, when I was in college. Uh, and so it's changed much since then. Uh, but we had a Twitter question that kind of followed along uh, these lines. But uh, what was something that stood out to you the most uh, when you first got your eyes on Ja? Oh, well, he actually did a dunk. He did a dunk um, like it was a windmill off vert. And, 
And then he started just messing around three on three. So his athleticism, his smoothness, okay. um, you know, that's, that's what, that's what really how long and lanky he was. And then um, the following day, uh, he, I believe he had like 29 points and a bunch of assists. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but the way he was able to just move and glide on the floor and, you know, how smooth and skilled he was. And, you know, Jalen Crutcher was smooth and skilled too. Yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, at, when you're looking at guards, that's what you really like to look at, how, how the game comes easy to them. Yeah, and, and another Twitter question as well that came from someone, uh, one of our fans, uh, they're wondering about like his weight because Ja is still, he's still slender, right? He, his frame isn't big. So when he came in, was that like a huge issue trying to get some weight on him? Um, you know, I never, I never coached Ja. I, I just, I was, oh. I was in the recruitment process. So um, I left to Dayton when he was coming in his freshman year, but I mean, he was, he was okay. uh, skinny, um, you know, but, you know, as a recruiter, um, I would say if that's what's holding a kid back, then that's okay <laughs> because that's what I have strength coaches for. Um, you know, Jalen was skinny as well, too. So, I mean, you have a strength coach on staff that's able to do his job. And and um, so, I mean, you know, a, a job gains weight every year. Uh, you know, yeah. when he was at IMG during the draft process. I was able to go down there and see him for a day. And he was with his guys, UJ. Um and you know Trey Draper, and he was able to he was able to um, you know get in the weight room. And, and you know one thing about Ja, he, he's he's determined. So yeah, if he knows what he needs to work on. He's going to work on it. Yeah, no, and uh, hitting on that determination, um, I, I think it's really Ja's inner drive, like his whatever that chip on his shoulder uh, that he really just makes himself be the best player on the court. Uh, was that something that you saw in the recruiting and does it surprise you now the way he is in the NBA with that? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that stood out. Um, you know, he makes his, he makes his teammates better. Right. Okay. Without dominating, like without dominating shots. Um, he just makes everyone better and you see that now, but even in high school, um, and in AAU and then, you know, Ja, Ja's a, you know, the determination is, you know, probably a lot of it's because he's been slept on, you know, yeah. his family, um, you know, his family oriented, you know, he has different, he probably has different factors in his life that drives him like his daughter. Um, yeah. And, you know, he probably wants to prove people wrong. I don't want to speak words for him, but right, right. just knowing him, um, you know, you know, knowing the family very well. And then, you know, Ja, as a point guard, you have to be a leader in my opinion. And, and his leadership qualities come from his parents because, those that family serves they serve the community when I was there um when Matt was there recruiting as well when he went to his house and then uh you know job uh, one thing one story I shared throughout the years was um Joe will come home and train kids with his dad okay in his backyard and you know little kids and he'll be training his sister and you know that's just one way Josh serves and um you know that's what makes him a great leader and, and determined to be successful um, but having a chip on your shoulder, that's, that's one thing coaches, in my opinion, that's one thing you can't teach. And, and that's what he has since day one. Yeah, very much. So, uh, we're here with, uh, coach James Kane, who drafted or not drafted, sorry, recruited John Morant, uh, and we, before he went to Murray state, but I do have a couple more questions kind of on that. Uh, John was, uh, the, the guy who he was going into his freshman year, who you recruited and saw him and kind of put him towards that direction of Murray. And then you see him kind of take his leap, maybe from his first to second year from college, which you're not a part of, right? You're not coaching them. Uh, at this point, are you in Dayton? Yes, I was in Dayton. Okay. Yes. So then you see him take another leap that he is now. Like, does that, do, do those leaps surprise you with how much he's getting better year after year? Just in a, this is a small sample size of less than five years. Does that surprise you at all? Um, I mean, knowing Ja and knowing the program that Murray State is and, and the leadership that Matt McMahon has and, and you you come in there and work every single day, you're just going to get better, you know, yeah. and, and instilling that work ethic in, into Ja, um, you know, the sky's the limit. So, you know, coming out of high school, I would consider him a late bloomer um, to where he was just scratching the surface, um, you know, going into Murray, you know, Shane Nichols, Casey Long, Tim Kane, the assistants there did a tremendous job. 
um, being able to get him in the gym and work on skill development. I remember talking to Shane a lot and um, sharing stories with him and, and, you know, and that, that's just the leadership that that program has under Matt. So you're only going to get, you're, you're going to get better at Murray. There's, you yeah. have no choice. And, you know, that's why that's, that's why that program is so successful. Um, and then taking that into the NBA, um, you know, it's just a matter of time until Jaw got, got comfortable, you know, and, and yeah. once, once a, once a player like him gets comfortable, it's, it's, it's scary. It's scary for what they can do. And, on and you know on top of his work ethic and the chip on his shoulder so um you know sky's the limit for him you know sky's the limit for him and and um we've had discussions and you know he could be one of the all-time greats to ever play this game you know yeah do you have anybody you would compare him to um I, i know he's jaw and it's hard to compare him. Some people have said a little bit of uh, Derek Rose, Allen Iverson, Steve Francis. That's probably my favorite because Stevie Franchise was one of the more elite players when he was at his best. Uh, is there anybody you compare him to or is that just it's, – it, you just can't compare? Yeah, I don't – you know, I know everyone – a lot of people ask me that. I, I don't want to compare him to yeah. – I mean, Jaws, Jaws in his own category in my – you know, in my view and – um I think, you know, obviously you could compare him to multiple people, but right. Josh, Ja, man, and you know, he, uh, you know, T. Morant was a hell of a player too. Now, so he, really, uh, yeah, it comes out. You, you know, you got a little bit of T's game in him, and and uh, Jamie as well. So, um, but you know, T did a tremendous job being able to train him at such a young age and still that. Um, and you know, I, I, I think you're comparisons of thief of joy so i just i, I don't want to compare him to anybody and just enjoy watching him play so i agree it, it's tough and i've always said like you can compare those but how can you make one player out of all those players you can't uh but it's so fun to watch him uh speaking of t this is another one that came in from a fan um they were asking was t around like i know he you said he was in the recruiting as well um, but it was he also a part of watching his games like he is because in Memphis he goes to every single game um, at home for sure, but almost on the road. Yeah, that hasn't changed. Okay, that, that, as long as I've known them, right? You no, know, I mean T coached them. T coached them in yeah. that game that I watched uh, him versus Tevin, and I mean Jamie's at every one of his games taking stats. Um, you know, T in the front row. Um, you know, Jamie's there as well. So yeah. Um, the family's always been involved. They've always been hands on. Um, and as far as I've known them, and, and, and you know, I, I will say this: they're one of the most unique families I've ever met in the recruiting process because they're so down to earth and they were so humble in the process. Um, they were just grateful. They were really? grateful, and, and, and you know, from my experience, yeah, and, you know, you deal with you deal with different people in recruiting, and um, you know, I'm just I, I was just blessed to get to know them. Yeah. You know, and still and still know them and um, right. still had the relationship. And, and, and you know, I'm just very fortunate to be part of their lives now. Yeah. Um, just a few more questions and uh, these should be pretty easy. But did you ever see one of his backyard, the famous or the infamous backyard workouts where he's going through all the tires and all that fun stuff? Yeah. Or yeah. maybe not fun. <laughs> yeah, I was back there. I was back there a couple of times. Um I remember my first time I was getting bit by mosquitoes, man. It was, it was, those things were huge in South Carolina. And then uh, if you ask Jamie, they, they had um, they had these crows coming down, you know, uh, like just swarming in, trying to eat. I, I guess there was like leftover food in there. These things were huge. So uh, we have some stories back there. But yeah, awesome. I, was, I was back there. Um, he was out there training every night, you know. And then, you know, what's what's really cool is they would have the on the weekends, they would have the town over. So like one time I was over there and there was like 30 people, 30 people wow. out there just hooping. Um, and T's on the barbecue, cooking wings. Uh, Jamie's in the kitchen cooking and they're just serving the community. And, um, you know, it was, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen a family do. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. So, yeah, I mean, he's out, he, he was out there every night training. Ah, on that's tires, crazy. Doing that stuff. So, yeah, most definitely. Most wow. Definitely. Wow. All right. So I know you're busy. Um, How much are you able to either watch or even attend or anything with job, but also your other players? It has to be hard to keep up uh, with everyone. But are you able to do somewhat of something to see them? Yeah, I mean, at night, I, you know, I I bought the uh, NBA package, so I have it on my on my TV. I have it on my phone. So, 
you know, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to been around some really good players and, and be in their lives and coach them. So, you know, um, once Jaw got drafted, I bought it. And, I, you know, I try to catch every game. I try. Um, you know, we, we, we talk periodically throughout the week. Like, he had a nice. tremendous game last night. I uh, texted with his mom this morning. So, um, you know, I, I try to catch everyone if I can. Um, if I'm traveling, it's tough. But then, you know, there's other guys in the league that I've been able to coach, and I, I try to catch their games as well. And then when they play each other, that's that's pretty cool to watch too. Yeah. So, um, but you know, Jaws, Jaws, as as much of a joy he is to watch, he's even you know that much better as a human being because, like Jalen Crutcher, for instance, you know, Jaws took him under his wing, and um, you know, kind of mentored him throughout the summer. And you know, the guy's an NBA player; he doesn't have to do that. You know, and 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 that's him giving back to the community and. And I remember Jalen really appreciated that during that time as well. So, um, you know, he's he's a, he's a special human being. I know he's a great player. He's a special human being. Yeah, that's what uh, – well, I think that's what really brings Memphis to wrap their arms around him. He, he's so Memphis. He's the guy who, off the street, you could see him, talk to him, and talk to anybody, carry on conversation with anybody, very humble, but also – you know, he's he's so good at what he does. He really just wraps up Memphis all in one. Uh, last question, and speaking of being a, like a proud coach, you know, when you're able to watch the former players, former recruits go against each other, Ja potentially, and this is potential, has a chance to be an all-star this year and maybe an all-star starter. As a coach, taking away all of what Ja's worked for because this is because of Ja, he's worked his butt off to get here. How does it make you feel as a coach to see him get to these levels? Um, well, first off, I don't know if it's potential. I mean, I think he's uh, he, he is a starter. <laughs> okay, is, we agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, if whoever doesn't vote for him, I don't know what they're watching. But, um, but I, it's just you know, just knowing where he, where he's the way he was raised and where he came from, and and knowing um, you know how how innocent I would say innocent, you know, during high school to where. Um, just knowing where they're from, small little town, and, and just you know working, putting the work in, and and being a winner on and off the floor. I mean, it just speaks volumes to him, and, and you know it, it's it's great to see him do that. And you know, watching him's a joy for me. You know, watching him's a joy. Um, just playing the game with such energy and excitement, and you know, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of his family. Um, you know, I'm proud of I'm proud of. Uh, what he's done and, and how he's carried himself and, and how he's handled everything. Cause at 20, I forgot. I mean, he's, he's 22 now, 22 now, but you know, as a 20 year old, as a 20, 21 year old kid getting thrown into the NBA, like he did <sighs> and the way he's handled it. I mean, not many people can do that. Not many people can do that. And um, yeah, just to, that's a testament to his family, but you know, to answer your question, you know, it's just, it's a joy to watch just yep. knowing what he's been through and what he's, what he's overcome and, and uh, what he's continued to do. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I can tell uh, just from just his interview, you know, it is on video, right? We're talking, but, you know, this is just audio, but I can see in your eye the, the joy, uh, the proud Papa moment as, it's, as it might come off, uh, because really it is. It's a proud moment for everyone. Uh, he's worked his butt off, but it also – it takes a lot of people around you to kind of keep you on the, you know, the straight and narrow, but also, you know, kind of get you to that point. And I know he's very thankful for you as well as his family, his fans and everybody. Uh, and so that has to be a super cool moment. Uh, but one thing, when, when we make it to the playoffs, because I think the Grizzlies are heading that way, we got to get you to the grind house sitting right next to T during the playoffs. That, that's that got to happen, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've, I've actually been to games with T. I've been to games with T um, every time I'm in Memphis. Um, you know, the Memphis, the Memphis fans show great love and it's a great place to be. And, um, you know, Zach Kleiman's done, done a tremendous job building that team yeah. and building that roster and, and, you know, for the future. Cause I, I don't know the ages, but that's a young team yeah. and they play and coach Taylor has been, you know, doing a tremendous job. So, um, but yeah, most definitely. I, it, it's just a phone call away. We get T, you know, T, T, T would do anything, man. He, he loves, he loves his basketball. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a character at the Grizzlies games. It's a lot of fun, um, and but having uh, having his guys, having Jaws guys uh, front row for a playoff game in the Grindhouse. If you've never been to uh, the Grizzlies playoff game, 
you got to be there because it is a spectacle in itself. But, uh, but Coach King, I can't thank you enough. Um, I know from just meeting you just now, I see why people want to be recruited by you or end up falling in love with you because literally in these 20 minutes or so, um, I literally feel like I've been recruited right now. Like I'm a huge fan. Um, and so we're now all of Memphis officially after this to you, we're all going to be cheering on the flyers, uh, for the rest of the year. That's a hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on and, you know, I'll be there soon. You know, hopefully they, uh, you know, I get the schedule, playoff schedule and I'll be able to make a trip soon. So, um, definitely looking forward to seeing you. We can't wait. Thank you so much, coach.